All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video, and I'm going to show you guys how to get started with connecting to the Discord gateway. So I highly recommend you guys watch the previous video that I uploaded that talks about how the gateway works and how the whole connection to it actually works. If you don't watch it, you're going to be so confused because we're actually going to do the implementation. So I highly recommend you guys check out that video. So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new directory. We're going to call this Dino Discord Lib. And if, in case if I didn't mention it, we are going to be using Deno, Dino, whatever you want to call it. It's actually pronounced Deno, but I like calling it Dino. And it's just a new runtime environment for JavaScript and TypeScript. And it's actually pretty awesome. The creator of Deno is the same creator of Node.js. And there are a lot of improvements in Deno. So I would highly recommend you check it out. I'll probably make a new video about Deno, talking about why I enjoy it and how to actually get started with it. But if you want to follow along, uh, what I'll do is I'll actually link the documentation to Deno the Deno's website, and you can actually see how to install Deno. It's actually fair, fairly easy. But the whole point that I want to make in this video is to show you guys that it's very easy to connect to the Discord gateway, and you can do this in whatever language. So as long as you understand the process, you can easily implement this in any language. So we have our text editor open. And what I can do is I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder. Well, actually, you know, I'll just create a new file called index.ts. And what I want to do is I want to actually import a module in Deno. Now in Deno, you actually don't need a package.json file. This is one of the things that is solved in Deno. Instead, you actually need to import it directly from the Deno repository. So if you look on the Deno website, there's actually the standard library and there are a whole bunch of standard APIs that are part of Deno. They also have third party modules as well, but we want WebSocket. So we're just going to simply scroll down and there should be a URL that they will allow you to just copy yep right over here so you can just copy this and let's just open up our visual studio code and we're just going to get rid of all of these for now and just have connect web socket this is what we're going to use to connect to the the socket and what we're going to do next is we're just going to have a simple try catch because when connecting to any network or performing some kind of asynchronous operation or just anything in general there might be exceptions or errors that are thrown so we want to make sure we're handling those errors and we're going to need our discord gateway url and i'm just going to store it in a variable for now okay so it's wss colon forward slash forward slash gateway dot discord dot gg slash and then query parameter v for version so we're on version six right now and then encoding json so what we're going to do inside the try is we're going to simply just do const socket equals connect websocket and we're going to pass in the gateway url and what we're going to do next is we're just going to simply say connected so that we know that we're connected now watch this so if i actually want to run my code right now let's go ahead and use the deno command run now if i just type index.ts it's actually going to compile and you're going to see that it says connected but there's actually an error over here and you can see that network access to this gateway was denied. And this is one of the nice things about Deno is that there's actually much more improved security in Deno out of the box. So out of the box, you cannot actually access networks or parts of the file system unless you specify a flag, which is basically saying, hey, look, I'm giving you permission to actually perform this asynchronous operation or this operation in general. Okay, so we have to specify the allow net flag, which basically means that we want to make some kind of network connection. So now let's pass an index.ts again. And there we go, connected, no errors. Okay, so once we are connected, we're going to use for await syntax. And we're going to go ahead and do const m of socket. This is going to allow us to listen to all of the messages sent from the socket itself. Okay, so if you look right over here, we can actually simply just go ahead. Oh, wait, I forgot to await something. Sorry about that. Yeah, because I was confused why it said connected. So let me run this again. Because it shouldn't have said connected. It should have said, it should have thrown an error. Right, there we go. It should have thrown an error first because I forgot to await it. So that's a mistake on my part. Sorry about that. But luckily we have TypeScript, which is going to detect these uh, errors for us, which is good. You can see over here, when I didn't have a wait, it said promise WebSocket must have a simple async iterator method that returns an async iterator. And we're getting that because we didn't await the connect WebSocket promise. Okay, so now watch what's going to happen when I console log M. Okay, so if I go ahead and do deno run again, allow net index.ts, 
watch what happens. We actually are connected to the gateway. And we get this JSON-like object back. It's actually not JSON. It's actually a WebSocket event. Okay, and we need to actually parse this accordingly. So what we're going to do is we're simply just going to call toString. And if we save and let's just rerun the program again, it's going to look the same. But now we can actually call json.parse to parse it accordingly. Now, obviously, this is not the appropriate way to parse it. There's actually documentation that explains how to properly uh, parse your payloads. So I would highly recommend you guys look into this because there's actually, it's actually, uh, according to documentation, it's actually a lot more complicated to receive payloads than sending them. For now, we can get away with just simply doing json.parse. But of course, in later videos, we're going to actually have to detect these payloads and make sure that we're parsing them accordingly. That's our responsibility. So watch what happens if I console log payload. It's just going to give us the JSON structure. See, we have now parsed our payload. And now you can see that from the previous slides, this is literally the same thing. You can see that it says opcode 10, heartbeat interval 41,250 milliseconds. Okay, which basically means that's how often we need to send a heartbeat back to the gateway. So from here, what we want to do is we want to actually check what the opcode is. Because right now, all that has happened was we received the hello payload. That's it. We haven't done anything significant yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just simply destructure a couple of properties from the payload object. And it's not necessary that all of the time these values are going to be truthy so sometimes they might be null but for now we're going to go ahead and simply get the heartbeat interval as well from d and now i'm going to check to see well actually i'm going to use a switch case instead so switch up and what we want to do is we want to check the case for opcode 10 so if the opcode is 10 that means we receive the hello payload so i'm just doing a simple console log and we'll do d let's just log d and let's just break for now and let's run our code again and now you can see right over here that we have received opcode 10, which is good. So now if that's the case, what we need to do is we need to send a heartbeat. We need to start heartbeating with the Discord gateway. So remember, like I said in the previous video, we need to send a payload to the gateway. And we actually have to send the... Uh, yep, the client should now begin sending opcode 1 heartbeat every heartbeat interval milliseconds. So if you click on this, it's going to tell you exactly what to send. Now it says the inner D key is the last sequence number uh, received by the client. So if you haven't received one, you can just uh, set it to null. So that's what we're going to do. And for now, we'll just leave it out here. But obviously, if you were to write your own library, you would want to encapsulate all of these things in their own classes or their own modules. But just for demonstration, I'm just going to do it this way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call set interval and I'm just going to do a console log. And we're just going to say sending heartbeat. And then we're just going to do socket.send. And we need to actually parse this because we actually cannot send JSON. So JSON.stringify. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in P, which is the payload. Okay. And we're going to need to pass in the heartbeat interval down over here. Okay. So now that we've started heartbeating, this is going to keep the connection alive. Okay. So now the next thing that we actually have to do is we need to actually identify ourselves, okay? So what we're going to do is we're simply just going to go ahead and identify ourselves by passing in an identify payload. So we're going to actually need to specify a couple of properties and the Discord documentation shows you the basic payload that you need to send. You can actually click on identify structure and you can see all of the fields that you can pass in. The important one obviously is the token that you need so you're obviously going to need to get your discord bot token so let me go ahead and just grab that real quick so i got my bot token so i'm just going to declare a variable and assign that variable my bot token obviously like i said i'm not going to bother hiding it in a separate file because i'm assuming that if you're watching this video you know how to properly hide your token but we're going to go ahead and create a properties object and for os we're going to pass in linux for browser this is the name of our library so you can call it whatever you want dino Discord and device Dino Discord. And it literally says it on the documentation on what to name it. If you look right over here, 
Linux, my library, my library. I think you can actually change OS to something like Discord, iOS, and it'll show like the mobile icon when it's logged in. I'm not entirely sure though. And you can see that it says in the documentation, let me zoom in a little bit. If the payload is valid, then the gateway will respond with a ready event. So let's watch what happens when we send this payload. So to do that, first let's go and do this. Const identify, and we're gonna specify opcode two, D, we're gonna pass in token and then properties. And that should be it for our identify payload. And then we're simply just going to go ahead and call socket.send, json.stringify, identify. There we go. Okay, and that's it for the identify part. So now let me go ahead and console log payload now. So let's run our code and let's see what happens. Now, if you look over here, you can see that we have a bunch of data that was received from the gateway. You can see that we actually have this ready event that was fired. T is the event name, and then we can see the opcode, the S. I think S is the sequence. It should say it's somewhere over here on the documentation. Uh, yeah, event. Uh, oh, yeah, sequence number used for resuming sessions and heartbeats. Yep. And then we have the opcode, which is zero. D. And you can see that we have all of our information. We have user verified, username, MFA enabled, ID, flags, email, discriminator, bot, everything. So that's pretty much the basics when it comes to connecting to the Discord gateway. You can see that we actually have all the data that we want and we can start listening to events. Now, I think with the Discord platform, you actually need to specify, I think, intents. I'm not entirely sure if that is required in version 6. I think it is, but... um. We can see right over here, intents are optionally supported on the V6 gateway. They will become mandatory in a future gateway version. Okay, so yeah, in a future gateway, I think in version 7, they're going to require you to specify intents. So that's something that we can look at a later time. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out and helped you guys understand how the WebSocket connection is initially done. Obviously, this is not the best way to do it, but you know, there's more better practices to doing this. But this is just the general idea, okay? I just want to show you guys the general idea of what you're supposed to do. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.